I still have 50 minutes, that's great, but the counter doesn't start it. No problem for that. Why should you delegate your security? You want to delegate your security. You don't want to do it by yourself. You don't want to over and over write these logging forms, write the backend logic. How do you store the users in your, in your database? How do you store the passwords? In clear text? Hmm. So the way to go is to delegate your security to someone else. That's what Kim does. She delegates her security this, to this really hungry guy. Um, and that's exactly what Keycloak is. Keycloak is a server. You go on a website, you download the server, you unzip it, you start it, you're ready to go. You delegate to Keycloak all your security, your authentication, the management of your users, your authorization layer. It's really easy, and we will see that live in a few minutes, okay? But to give you a bit the big picture of what Keycloak exactly is, I have this picture here. So the main concept of Keycloak is Keycloak manage rooms. So rooms is a really difficult word for me to say in, in English, rooms. So I prefer to say territories. So to Keycloak, you give them a territory, and on this territory, there are different cities that Keycloak has to protect. So if we take a look at this island, we have different cities. In the north, we have JEE land. No one wants to go there anymore. Not sure why. On the contrary, on the seaside, you have Angular land. Yes, that's the place to go. Everyone wants to go there. We have microservices land. Not really sure what is happening there. And of course, in the middle, we have the king of the world, Node.js land. And you arrive with your boat and you navigate to Angular land. So you open your browser and you go to your web app to your Angular land. And what happens there? Well, you have border control. And they say, hey, Sebi, you are not authenticated. Please go to the Keycloak Island here to get authenticated. And I'm redirected to the Keycloak Island. And when I say a redirect, I really get an HTTP redirect to the Keycloak server. Once I'm on the Keycloak server, well, I'm presented with a login form. And here I enter my credentials. And if everything is OK, I just get a stamp. And with this stamp, I can go back to my island and visit all these awesome cities. But this stamp is not just a randomly generated stamp. It's more than that. It's a token that contains payload. It's a really powerful token. We call that a JWT for JSON Web Tokens. So my Keycloak server generates this token for me that is called a self-contained token. That means it's the token that contains payload, information about my username, until when I'm logged in, what are my walls, and any, any custom payload that you want to put into it, you can do it. If we take a quickly look at how a JOT looks like, we have a header, not the most interesting part. We just uh, specify which algorithm we use to sign this token. I will come back on that later. But that is an important part. That are the claims. That is the payload of my token. Here I have some mandatory fields, uh, like the expiration date, my username. But stuff like here is, that is completely custom. Um, so you can add whatever you want. And the last part, is the important part, is the signature. So Keycloak have a private key and a public key. And once he created my token, he will use the private key to sign this token, okay? And once I have this signed token, any other party receiving this token can use, uh, can use the public key to verify this token. So that is how a token looks like. One is turned into uh, base64, so it's really easy to add that to an HTTP request. You put that in your header, and then uh, imagine a REST service receiving this token, this request. It checks for the headers, and if there's an authorization header, it can grab that token, and then it retrieves the public key from Keycloak, and with the public key, you can see if the token is valid or not. If it's valid, 
everything is okay, you can go on with the request. So that is basically how Keycloak works. Um, we will go live demoing in a while, just to uh, sum up what Keycloak does. So as I said, it's an out-of-the-box solution that really means you just download it, you unzip it, and you are ready to go. Of course, it's uh, like any other product of uh, Red Hat, it's open source, so everything that I will show you today, you can use it tonight for free. And more importantly, you can contribute. So if you want to contribute to Keycloak, please do. We love contribution. Could be just a, a small typo in the documentation, a crazy feature, as long that you create a ticket, create nice code with test, integration test, if it's okay, we will just ship it in the next release. Uh, we support out-of-the-box OpenID Connect, that is our preferred way, but we know that still a lot of people are using SAML2, so we support SAML2, even Kerberos. We have social log of brokering, that means if you want your users to be able to use our Twitter, Facebook, GitHub account, it's just a matter of a few clicks and they can use it. User Federation, imagine that your company has an Active Directory or any other LDAP. Uh, well, it's really easy to bridge that with Keycloak. So uh, people can still use Keycloak with their LDAP credentials. We have single sign, sign on, that means that if you are on a tab and you're logged in, you open a second app, a different app, inside the same room, you won't have to log in again. If you have some weird use cases, uh, you can always implement them by yourself because we provide a lot of SPIs. And we also have user account management. That means the user, once he's logged in, he can have a space for himself where he can, where he can update his user details, uh, reset his password, and stuff like that. Uh, beside that, we have public key rotation, so you can easily rotate your public keys every three months, for instance. We have some kind of brute force detection, um, one-time password. Maybe I will show it depending on the time. You know, one-time password is if you want to have two odds uh, factor. So you, uh, ex you have your password and then you have to uh, add an extra password based on time. It's just a matter of a few clicks. Authorization layer, I could speak the whole day about that. Uh, my talk is more focused on the authentication as part, but authorization, we have everything to make really fine, great uh, authorization. Uh, just some self-promotion, we are really proud because of that. Uh, on the tech radar of Fast Fork, uh, for one year long now, we are in the assess uh, circle, and we are pretty close to the adapt circle. So that is really great. Um, and I think that's it. Let's go uh, demoing. So, what I want to do is really to give you uh, the, the full journey of someone that will discover Keycloak for the first time. So where do you start? Well, you start on the Keycloak site. You go on keycloak.org, you go to the download, and you download a server, okay? So uh, I did it this morning because you can watch me downloading Keycloak, it's not that exciting. So I already downloaded it, and it should be, here, let me, okay, and let me start Keycloak. I just unzip it, I give some port offset because I will be running other apps and I don't want any port conflict, okay. And here we go, we start Keycloak really for the first time. Should be pretty fast, it's the first time though he has to create all the tables and stuff like that. Okay, here we go, and uh, I should be able to go to my Keycloak console. And because it's my really first time that I log in, I need to create an admin user. So let's create a really secure admin. Admin user, security is important. Okay, and now I should be able to go to my Keycloak console. So that is my Keycloak console. Here I can manage my realms, my clients. So what is a client for Keycloak? A client is any application that you will secure. So it could be a front-end app, a back-end app, whatever. For Keycloak, it's called a client. I can also create my users, my walls. But for this demo, uh, let's create our realm, our territory. Here we are in the master territory. Let's create another one and let's call it J Prime. J Prime, okay, that's the first thing I need. I have now a new realm 
And the next thing I want to do is to create a client in this realm. And so we will be building a really exciting product uh, that is called the product app. You will see best app ever. Um, and it will be running on my local host, local host, uh, 8080. Yes, we are all good. I just press save. And by default, I have uh, all the details. I can keep the details here. Uh, I'm using OpenID Connect here. Uh, it's a public client. OK, I got my redirect URL. Everything is OK. I can go to the next part. I want to create a role in my realm. So let's create a role. It's as easy as doing add role. And uh, let's create a role called user. OK, here we go. I got my role user. And last part is I have to create a user. So let's add a user. Here, the only mandatory field uh, when you create it here is the username. So let's call it Sibi. And it's all I need. I save it. By default, my user doesn't have any credentials. He don't have a password. So we have to create an initial password. So let's give him a really secure password, Sebi. Temporary, that means uh, I can leave that. It's, that means that if the user logs in for the first time, he will have to update his password. But for the demo, we don't really care. My password is reset. And the really last thing I have to do is to assign the user uh, uh, the role to my user. So I assign it. I'm done with configuring my application. So now let's create the product app application. And it will be a Spring Boot app. And where do you start when you want to do a Spring Boot app? On? Start.spring.io, exactly. So it will be a whole school app, a, client, a server side app. We want some web, so we add some web. I will have some templating for generating my front end pages, so I will be using Fear Marker. And of course, I want to use Keycloak. I call this app the product app. Here we go, and we generate project. Here we go, and let me see, let me extract that. I should have a G prime folder here. Whoa, OK, let's extract it here. And now let's open that in my IDE. Let's do open and submit. Now you can see here all the conferences where I went. Uh, J prime, J prime, here we go. Product app, OK, uh, new window, here we go. It's an empty app. OK, Maven is correct with me. Awesome. And the product app will be an app about products with two pages, one landing page with one link called products. And when you click the products, you will be on a page with products. And that's the page we want to secure. So let's start with the uh, landing page. So I create a new HTML file. We call it index.html. Here we go. Uh, title, let's give it just one H1 title. My awesome landing page. OK, here we go. And then we add just a link that goes to products. OK, and it's called my products. And that's it. And now let's create my product page. So that will be a template. Let's create a new template. We will call it products.ftl because it's a free marker. OK, here we go. And here I'm going to type really fast. Oh. <laughs> my, my, my magic templates are not wake, working. Uh, let me just import. Oh. Just one moment. This is supposed to help me against the demo gods, but apparently it's not working really well. Live template, live template, here we go. Because it's really boring stuff to type, and I'm using some templates for that. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, just I, OK, that's easy. Here we go. And now, oh, there we go. And then I create HTML, I create a body. Uh, body, not bad, 
body. Okay, and here um, I want to list my products. So I create my list. Come on. Hop. You can see that I type really, really fast. So that's pretty easy here. I just iterate on my products and I just show them. Uh, last thing I need, uh, let me add, I'm old school uh, designer. So let me add a BR here, something like that. No? I don't remember how it works. Okay, and uh, the other last thing I need is uh, a logout. So I want to be able to log out of my app, so I just put here logout. Okay, I'm done with my front end. Let's write the app. We'll be fast. So that's my Spring Boot app here. And uh, like always, the first thing you need to do is create a controller. So let's create uh, my product. My product controller. Okay, before I forget, let me annotate that as controller. Here we go. And here I want to um, write my uh, root when a product is called. So let me create a, a get mapping on, on products. Okay, and here we do a public string get products. Here we go. And uh, I inject my spring model here. Okay, here we go. And what I do, I put some products in my model, add attributes, let's call it products. Here we go. And uh, here, let's use some hard-coded lists uh, as list. And here we can put iPhone and iPod. And what is the last one? iPad. OK. Here we go. And last thing we need to do is return the name of the template that we want to generate. And in this case, it's called products. OK, I'm done. Uh, I just need to implement the logout, which is pretty easy as well. So here I do and get many on logout. And here I do public string uh, logout. Here I just inject my HTTP servlet request. Here we go. Here I do something really bad that you should not do, but I do it here. Throws exceptions. Okay, and what I do, request dot uh, logout, and I return to my landing page. Okay, I'm done writing my app, and now I need to secure it. Uh, well, what we can do before securing it, make sure it works. So by default, Keycloak um, is enabled. Just let just disable that to be sure my app is working. So let me just start it. OK, should be fast with Spring Boot. And if I open a new incognito window, let me go to 8080. Here we go. Awesome. Here you can see my CSS skills in action. And if I go to my products, I got a list of products. So awesome, it's working. Now I want to secure this page. So how should I do that? Well, good news, I don't have to change the code at all. It's just some configuration that I need to provide. So let me remove this. Let me increase the font. So I just have to provide some configuration. First thing is, where is my Keycloak server running? So my Keycloak server running is running on local host post 8180 slash us, okay. On which realm is my app declared? It's on JPrime, okay. What is the name of my client, the resource on this side? It's uh, the product app and lately, is it a public client? Yeah, it's a public client. That are the mandatory fields, but now I haven't defined any security constraints. So let's, like you will do with the old Java EE app in your web.xml, you will define security constraints. It's the same here. We are securing the servlet container here for now. So um, instead of doing that in the web.xml, you can do that here. And here I type really fast as well. Uh, but just to sum up, uh, what I say here, any request coming on this pattern, should be authenticated, and the user should have the wall user. OK, that's all I need to do. And now I can restart my app. OK, let's go back to my landing page. 
And now, what should happen if the demo gods are with me? If I click here, I should be redirected to Keycloak. Okay, so let's go. And here I'm redirected on Keycloak. Now I am on Keycloak. I'm not on my app anymore. But now I can use the user that I just created, Sibi, Sibi, login, and I'm on my secured page now. You see, it's that easy to secure a Spring Boot app with Keycloak. Uh, let me log out again. And let's go here, and let's play a bit with this logging screen. Let's go back to the Keycloak console. So my Keycloak console is over there. And if I go to my Wilm settings, here I got a tab called Login. So maybe I want to have new users to be able to register. OK. Uh, users will probably forget their password. So let's provide a link that they can ask for a new password. And then you just have to configure your email server here, and it's OK. Uh, and you want to remember me as well, OK? So you just uh, save that. And uh, now, here on my login screen, if I refresh this, now you, can, uh, you have the remember me, the forget password. I can register as a new user if I want. If I click here, I come on a register form that you can customize, of course. Um, let's go a step further. Um, you are all developers here, so you probably have a GitHub account. So it will be nice that you can uh, log in with your GitHub account. So let's go to identity providers. And if you go there, you can see a whole list of identity providers already configured for you. And if you go to, uh, let me say, GitHub, for instance, uh, here you know it need a client ID, client secret that you create on your GitHub site. Let me just put here num uh, dummy numbers. OK, you save this one. And just for the fun, let me add another one, uh, like Twitter. OK. Here I put dummy numbers. Here we go, save. And again, if I go back to my screen here and that I refresh, now I will be able to log in with GitHub or Twitter. Uh, you can configure if you want the user to be created in Keycloak or just to be read-only. Uh, you can fine-tune that. But it's that easy to add social brokering to your app. Let me see the time, 22 minutes, okay. So, as I said here, I was securing the servlet container. With Spring Boot, you have the embedded uh, servlet container. By default, it's Tomcat. You can use Jetty or Undertow. It will work the same thing. But it could be that if you are doing Spring and that you are doing security, maybe you would like to do some Spring security. Let's see if Kiklo can help us doing some integration with Spring security. So really, first thing I have to do is to add a dependency. And that's not one from Keycloak, it's just a dependency from Spring Boot. And it's the starter about Spring Security. OK, let me enable an auto import. That will just bring in the Spring Security jars. OK, next step is um, you probably know, if you know a bit about Spring Security, that you have to provide your own security config class where you define your security rules and stuff like that. So what we did with Keycloak, we uh, created a subclass of the security config, and in turn, you just have to extend that class. So look here how fast I am to type. <laughs> it's boring to type, so I just... So basically, uh, you just have to extend this class, and this class extend the class from, um, from Spring Security. And if we go back to our app, Security config, we can ignore most of that. It's just gluing stuff. The most important part is the configure part here. And here I say, OK, any uh, request to products should be authenticated, and the user should have the, uh, the wall user. OK? And the nice thing is now that I can remove this, because now it's not my servlet container that manage the security, but it's Spring security itself. And if I just restart this app, we should have exactly the same stuff as before, except that now it is Spring Security that secures my app in combination with Keycloak, of course. So if I go back here, I go back to my landing page, 
And I log in with CB. Oh, CB. CB. I'm again logged in. Uh, nothing impressive here, but look, think what happened b behind the scenes. Now it's all secured with Spring Security. Okay. Let's get, let's go uh, a bit further because there's something really horrible in my code. Well, there are a lot of things horrible, but this part is really not so nice. Retrieving a hard-coded list. It sh would be so much nicer if I had a REST service providing me a list of products and th that my app can just consume this REST service. And of course, it needs to be secured. Okay? So I have already a REST app running here. I won't do it live coding because I'm short in time. But let's just take a look at this application. It's also a Spring Boot app. Uh, this time I wrote it in Kotlin because Kotlin is funny. <laughs> uh, look, even the methods are called fun. And that is, that is pretty impressive. Just this, with this, I get a REST service, okay? Uh, so what I do, get products and products, and I retrieve a list of products. And just to prove that I'm not cheating, I put here different products, so you will be sure my app is retrieving different products. Okay, and that's all I need to do. Uh, oh yeah, and of course, I provided some security constraints like I did before. Uh, it's running on another port. Okay, let's go. Let's run that. It's on port 8081. And uh, let me see. Oh yeah, here, just this one is interesting. I flagged this app as bearer only. That means that only request that already contains a token should be accepted. If there are no token, there's no point of doing a redirect to a logging screen because no human will interact with this service. Only other services or applications. So if there's no token, I just uh, return an unauthorized. Uh, we can make sure our app is secured. So if I go to localhost 8081 slash products, Awesome, that's what I want. I got an unauthorized. So that means my REST service is secured. Awesome. Now I need to modify my Spring Boot app, my first app, so it can call this service. So for those that are used to do uh, Spring Boot or Spring, you probably know about a REST template, which is a small library cl uh, utility class that make it really easy to um, create a, a REST client. So what we did, we created the Keycloak REST template, which is just a subclass of the REST template. And this class will take, do exactly the same as a REST template, except it will also put the authorization token for you in the header, and you don't have to care about that at all. Uh, so if I think I'm right, I already have it here. Oh, no. Hmm. So I need to create my factory here. And again, I'm, again, I just have to check my live coding stuff here. Let me see, KC uh, temp, KC temp. I think it's KC temp. Yes. Oof. So here, I just create a factory. Uh, don't ignore this error. That's something weird from IntelliJ. Uh, but for, with this, I can generate Keycloak REST templates. And so what we're going to do is change a bit this class. So I'm going to inject with auto wired uh, Keycloak REST template. I call it my template. OK. So this way, I will have the template available. And now I need to change this part here. Um, because now, instead of returning a hard-coded list, I uh, want to call my template. Here, I type really fast as well. Um, so just for the sake, uh, template, here I do a get on the URL of my uh, product. And uh, that's all. And then I read the body response and put that in my model. Um, I think we are ready to go. So I can just restart my app. I'm going too fast. Yes. Okay. Okay. My app started. Um, let me go back to my 
product here. Let's refresh it. And now if I go to my products, you can see that uh, now I am consuming the web service. So what I did until now, I decomposed my monolithic app into two different applications. I now extracted my web service, and it's running in the same security realm, so it's secured. And that's pretty nice now, because now I have a web service. That means that other clients can, could consume this uh, web service. And that's the next step. I want to show you uh, how a web app can consume this service. So what I have here is a pretty simple, well, Angular app. Sorry, I'm old school, so it's Angular 1. I'm not yet into the new cool stuff. Um, but that gives me the opportunity to show you uh, the Keycloak JavaScript library, because that's a really important library for any web app that you will write, web-only app. You will need the Keycloak JavaScript library. And what I do here is I uh, say, OK, uh, read the config. And the config is running here. So you saw, you saw in the Spring Boot version, I was using a text, a property of files. Uh, but for all the other adapters for Java, EE, or for Node.js, we provide a JSON file uh, to provide the configuration. And uh, one thing I need to do before going back here is to declare this client in my Keycloak console. OK, let's go back to the Keycloak console. And here I go to the clients, and I say, OK, I want a new product called Product Rep this time. And Product Rep will be uh, running on port 8082. I save it. I can keep all the defaults. And um, one nice thing is if you don't have the configuration yet, you can just grab it from here. If you say, OK, give me the config, and you can just grab that. And uh, here, instead, I can just paste it. Well, it's the same here, but. And let's go back to our app itself. So Angular app, no, unless you want to see the Angular code, but this one, yeah, app. OK, here what I say, it's uh, key cloak. I say initialize yourself. And when you initialize yourself on load, the user should be logged in. If the user is not logged in, please uh, initiate the redirect to the Keycloak server. And if that all goes all right, then you can come in this success callback. Uh, otherwise, do this really bad thing of reloading forever the page. This is pretty bad, by the way. OK. Um, my function here is, well, oh, this is good that I checked that because that is wrong. Um, here I say, that is where my products are running. They are running here, so like the previous app I showed you. And uh, how can I make sure that each request will have the authorization header? So you have this nice thing with uh, Angular that is called interceptors. You can inject interceptors in your HTTP service. And that's what we do in, let me see, sorry, in this part here. Uh, you can ignore all this part. We do some fancy uh, stuff here, but the most important part is this one. So that means basically every time you do an HTTP request, please put uh, in the header, uh, authorization header with my token that I got from Keycloak. And that's all. We can start this app now. So let's start this app. Let me see here. It's running here. So. Uh, so I I ignore the wallfly swarm part. It's just I use that for convenient uh, because it provides me a, a web server uh, under tow, and for me it's just really easy to wrap that. But uh, it's just a pure web Angular app. Okay, it's running. So now I could open a new tab, and this time my app is running at port 8082. Okay, and here I have a button. Reload. And here I have my products. And you probably noticed that I didn't have to log in. 
And that's because single sign-on, I was already logged in here. So I didn't have to log in again. Okay? Um, let me see. What I want to show you is the token, how, what happens exactly. Let me see, let me do a reload again. And here we can see the request. And here we can see my token that has been passed in the header. And if I go, for instance, on a site that is called jot.io, okay, jot.io, here I can put my encoded token, my jot token. And here you can see what I show you previously uh, in my slides, uh, the decoded the JSON. So, uh, well, the header, we don't really care about it. Uh, but here we see it's product web. Uh, oh, it's really... Uh, let me see what I want to show you. Uh, Allowed origins, my walls. So here you can see my user role, my preferred name, a uh, username, Sebi. Uh, that's how my token looks like. Um, probably I can show you also a logout. So let me see that. Uh, probably now, if I go back. Oh, okay. I was afraid. Um, you see, uh, I logged out from my app, from this app, and when I went back to my web app, I also presented with uh, the login form. That means that I have single sign on, but I have also single sign out. So I just have to sign out from one of my apps and I will be logged out from all the other uh, sites. Okay. Um, what can we do? I was too fast. Usually I do that talk in Less of time, but I have eight minutes, but I have still sh stuff to show you. Uh, let's add one time password, okay? And by the way, it's a really weird look and feel here. Oh yeah, let's go back to normal. Okay, so let's imagine we want to add some extra security to our site. Uh, username and password is not enough. We want to have one time password now. Okay, let's go back to our console. And uh, here, in authentication, I can say that OTP, so one-time password, is required. Okay. So now, if I go back to my app, whatever the one is, let's use this one. And so I'm on my landing page. And now I log in with Sebi. Sebi. And now I need to configure my uh, OTP. So if you're using Google Authenticator or a free OTP, you can just use it. So let me use uh, Google Authenticator. So I just open that here and I just grab the code bar. I can probably scan it from here. Yeah, here we go. And that J Prime that gives me a code here, and you don't have my phone, so you don't have my code. You have my password, but not my code. And I put it here. Here we go. Well, you see the code here now, but. <laughs> okay, and now I have added OTP to my app. And it just took me, well, two minutes. So I have still six minutes to fill in. But I can, I have a lot of stuff to show you. Um, yeah, that might be a bit crazy, but we can try it. Let's try to integrate an LDAP server right now in six minutes to my Keyclo stuff. Whew. Why did I say that? Okay, let's try it. Um, so what I have is, uh, it's, uh, it's a Apache, key, um, Apache LDAP server. Uh, it's, a, let me see. It's here, okay. Uh, let me just, I have to read it. I have to read the readme. Oh, cat, no? Readme uh, and me, uh, MVN. Let's go to all my MVNs. We still have time, so. 
or let's, you know, I always do that. I go for my history instead of just, it takes me more time to go for my history than, okay. Uh, here we go, MVN, okay. Let me do that. Uh, MVM exec, okay. Okay, so here I'm starting um, an LDAP server and I provided also a list of uh, different users. Uh, here we go, and now if I need to make the bridge between the Keycloak and, and, and this LDAP server. So how do I do that? Um, I didn't, a user federation, and here I say, okay, let's create a new user federation for LDAP. Oh, and now it's gonna be, to be funny. Okay, it's an uh, other type of vendor, and uh, oh my God, okay. Um, Let me see. I my service there. User DN, I think is this. Uh, and bind D, bind DN, I think it's this. This credential is secret. Shh, so hard. Okay. Uh, I think it's it. Okay, and uh, now if I go back to my uh, console, okay, I have just to, mm, let me see, which are the users? J Brown with password, password, okay. So, let me go to the app, let's log out. So here, I should be able to log in with G Brown. So G Brown is a user that only exists in my LDAP. Uh, so password, and it will probably fail because I just realized now G Brown doesn't have the user role. So it will probably. Oh, that's funny. I have three minutes left. Let's scan a new co code bar. Uh, no? Okay, let's do it on my computer then. E Come on. This one. <laughs> oh, yeah, this one is working. <laughs> D Demo gods are really funny in Embrogoria. Okay, uh, 666. Wow, that is a sign, I think, eh, with the Demo gods. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, we have an error message, but we are logged in. I got a forbidden because G Brown, my user, uh, didn't have the user, didn't have the role user. I could probably, I don't know how I configured my LDAP, but let's see if the user was created here. Hey, there he is. J Brown, uh, J Brown, if I do user, I could also map the roles coming from LDAP. Here I just do the this way. And if I go back here and I, oh, no, I'm not. Uh, okay, so that's give me the opportunity to show how you from the key clock console can, oh, okay. Uh, Demo gods decided to have fun with me at the, okay, here we go. Uh, now if I log in with G Brown password, oh. <laughs> Security is important. One one nine nine one one nine one. Oh, no, no. Okay, and it's working. So, wow, that was impressive. In five minutes, you see, I got. Uh, it could be an Active Directory. Uh, there's just some fields that you have to enter, like where is my LDAP running, which are my domain names and stuff like that. But it's really easy. So. That can it make easy to make a slow migration to Keycloak if your organization has a huge LDAP server and you want to migrate slowly to Keycloak. That's, uh, you see, it's really easy to do. Uh, and I have one minute left and that are for the questions. Uh, and if you are shy, you can talk to me too later. I'm here the whole afternoon. And uh, thank you very much, everyone. Any questions? Okay. 
Uh, I would like to ask about Angular uh, login, uh, because it's supposed to be single page application, but uh, as far as I understand, you're doing redirect to the, um, another application. That means it's not single page anymore. Or uh, is it possible to log it uh, inside Angular application without going through redirection? Oh, uh, it's possible, but it's a bad practice. You could uh -huh. enable direct, direct grant, you bypass the whole OS2 flow, and you just provide your credentials, and it gives you uh, access token back if you really want to stay in your app. But uh, the thing is, uh, you probably want, I didn't have the time to speak about it, but all this is uh, teamable. You don't have to use this look and feel. You can create your own look and feel, uh, and you can provide it in your realm. So if you want, don't want to get the feeling to your users there changing from apps, you just provide the same look and feel. But yeah, it's possible, but it's not really a good practice to do that. You should have the redirect. Yeah, so uh, you have to load your application once, and then it's cached, and you don't have to load it. the same things again, because uh, Otherwise, you have to load it twice by redirection. Uh, by redirecting to your site, you have to go and load again the Angular application after the successful login and having the token. Or not? Okay, I'm not sure. Get, let's take it uh, offline uh, okay. after. Okay? okay yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yes? Uh, one more question. Can you use client certificates to authenticate? Uh, uh, yeah, we just added some support, but not all the certificates. So that's something I don't really master, but let me, we can have X, let me go to the doc, because that's where we go. Uh, securing a server administration. We, we started to add it, but the X, this is what we have right now. Uh, with, with 509 client certificate. Okay. By the way, our documentation is pretty complete. I just show you 10% of what is possible with Keycloak. Uh, you should go on, our doc is pretty nice, so uh, all the stuff you may wonder. And the other one is, if you have questions, please come on our mailing list, because the whole team is there, the whole community is there, and it's the best way to get an answer. No more questions? Again, you can, yeah? Um, so Google Platform, Azure have their own identity management. Where does key clock fit in? Oh, I, sorry, I missed the beginning of your question. Which? So for example, other cloud platforms like Google, Azure, Amazon have their own identity management and access management systems. Where does key clock fit in? Well, uh, like I said, you, you can still use them by identity brokering. Uh, the advantage is that Keycloak, you can uh, run it on-premise and uh, get, uh, have total control of your users. And if you want to connect to Azure or to, to, uh, to Google, you can still make the bridge with the brokering. Um, so it's, I don't know. It, it depends on your use cases. Uh, do you want to have your users managed by Google, yes or no? Or by Microsoft? <laughs> Thank you. OK, again, you can ask me other questions outside. Thank you very much.